Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here. I've been wanting to review this beer for several months now. But, but, it just was too expensive. Dogfish head. This is their Un Ora Italian Pilsner. Um, yeah, I when I saw this was coming out, I was like super intrigued because, you know, Italian Pilsner, give me all the Pilsner, give me all the Italian Pilsner. Essentially, Italian Pilsner means... American Opt. First, it kind of sounds weird when you think about it that way. It's Italian Pilsner, but it's basically a hopped up pills. Um, usually more kind of new school American style hops. Um, something a bit different than your Czech kind of pills. Um, but you know, Dogfish Head. You know, clean, crisp pills with a bunch of hops in it. It was just kind of like, to me, a match made in heaven. But <laughs> this beer is crazy expensive for what it is. It's a 5% hoppy pills. And I could not find this for less than $18 a four-pack. I was not going to do that. I was not going to pay that. That is insanity. I would kick my own ass if I paid that much for it. Um, I found it today. $14. $4 difference. Low enough for this guy to bite. Anyway, so what do we have going on here? Honora Pilsner, 5% alcohol by volume, dogfish head. Uh, an Italian-style Pilsner brewed with... Uh, polenta and continually hopped for un ora. We'll get to that in a second. An Italian style pilsner that's been co co continually hopped for, you've guessed it, a full 60 minutes. Un ora means 60 minutes in Italian. Um, a brewed with a finest flint corn polenta, un ora offers everything you've come to know and expect from a pilsner. Now this has a best buy Best Buy date of March 2024. We're in February 2024, so I can drink this and judge this like it's fresh off the line because it'd tell me it's going to be just as good into that date. Because that's what Best Buy dates too. They say this beer is exactly as perfectly well done then as it would be when it was fresh. You know, that's, that day, it goes to April 1st, Garbage. Hot garbage. But up until then, it's just going to be good. Oh, man, I hate Best Buy dates. Anyway, give it a pour, see what's going on. Gold. Gold. So it appeals to me, but there's something about this label. It's actually probably one of my more favorite dogfish head labels that I've seen as of late. So I do dig on it quite a bit. So we're winning there so far. As far as the beer looks, I mean, it looks what you'd expect from Craft Pills. It has this soft, hazy, uh, almost champagne-like kind of carbonation. Um... You know, hazy by, like, not dropping out. Like, it's not getting confused with a hazy IPA, but it has this soft little haze that you typically get from a crap Pilsner. And almost two index fingers of a nice, creamy, fluffy, with a little soapy kind of edge kind of head going on there. So, give it a whirl. Give it a nose. Yeah, I mean... Everything here is a cool malt for me. Not dismissing the hops here. I'm not dismissing what they're bringing to the table. But I'm getting a lot of classic kind of like almost like a Bavarian, Czechies kind of pills things here. I'm getting a precursor to a decent bitterness. I'm getting a melon characteristic that's quite fun. Soft little citrus vibes that I typically don't get from there. But it really is the malt bill here. More specifically that corn polenta. It, it, it's giving this like a beefier than typical pilsner kind of sweetness to it but there's a small twist to it, it doesn't come off like you know uh straight up Ma american adjunct lager or even like mexican lager corn it's not like that there's something a little bit more robust to it and i think it has to be that kind of corn polenta and it really is pretty purposeful pretty meaningful very snappy very rich it smells like a crispy boy but it has a little bit extra to it it comes off quite a bit more than what 5% would lead you to believe, or at least my experience with 5% pills. So it smells like a nice hopped up, malt forward, but in a very good way kind of pilsner. Let's dive in. Cheers, y'all. That's delicious. That is delicious. I'm curious what this was like fresh, though. Mmm. That malt, again, it's gotta be that corn plant in there. It comes off somewhere between what you typically get from slightly crackery pills and malt and almost like a wheat vibe to it. That's kind of how it's coming off for me. And it has this kind of richness to it. Again, north what you typically get from a 
rich pilsner, but definitely south of what you get from a lower kind of SRM kind of grainier kind of maltiness. Um, and it just has this kind of like little pop of extra flavor to it. I'm attributing it all to that corn. It just brings something I typically don't get from a lot of corn beast kind of uh, pilsner lager, things like that. Something a bit richer, something a bit more depth to it. Corn, um, while I think it's a fantastic um, malt to use in a lot of beers, can come off a little bit rich, a little bit flabby almost. Not rich, flabby is the word I'm looking for. And it just, it comes off of maybe a little bit kind of, not saccharine sweet, it's not cloying sweet. It has this kind of like almost artificial sweetness to it and you're getting none of that here. You're just getting this cool kind of robust maltiness that I can't put my finger on that I'm just gonna attribute to that corn bitten piece of the beer. The hop side of things, purposefully meaningful bitter. Not like crazy over the top bitter, but bitter for um, no, I was going to say for a style of beer, it's appropriately bitter. There is that little bit of sweetness to there. It is a little melon, a little bit of citrus. I feel like, and this is what I mentioned earlier about joking about it's going to be the best as it was the day it rolled off the line and subsequently saying I wish I would have this fresh. I think it would have been a little bit showier fruit-wise if it was a little bit fresher. I want to say this probably came out about six months ago. So you're probably talking September, October, I think, as this was originally kind of got out there and I'm really curious uh, what it tasted like then but I think it drinks really well now and it really comes off as what I, I don't want to say a typical Italian Pilsner because I don't think they're all similar but the attributes are here the big difference is that corn grist that whatever how whatever that polenta level corn that they've used there adds almost like that that um a little bit of richness in the malt while still staying snappy. So it's kind of like a, that's the coolest part of the beer. Not that the hops aren't great in the way the beer is produced and made. All that fun stuff. I think that really, that corn plant is really the star of the show here. And it makes for a very interesting beer and something I'm, I'm glad I bought. 18 bucks, it's still just, you know, I get it. But man, that's just too much. 14, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm glad I finally picked it up. I'm glad I found it for that price point because other than that, I would have been bummed if I would have missed it. Let's put it that way. So there you go. Uh, you know, Italian American style Pilsner through and through without being overtly showy. Super cool um, grain bill, super cool malt bill, super cool corn bill and a very fun beer and executed exceptionally well and uh, just bonkers well made. Is it one of the better Italian pills I've had as late? Yes. Um, uh, Mount Rushmore? I don't know. Maybe on the outside looking in, but it's worthy being up there. Uh, valued availability, like I said, is just crazy expensive. I've seen it uh, in like 40 different places, too. It wasn't like it was just like one or two places that it priced crazy. Um, it just, it was just expensive everywhere. But, you know, take that for what it's worth. If you're okay paying almost 20 bucks for 5% Pilsner, have at it. Be you, be you, and raise market prices and inflate everything like all the... Uh, new money bros do and um, leave you with if you like what we like this if you like Italian Pilsner if you like Hoppy Pilsner if you like Dogfish Head if you like clean well made beer you'll dig this so there you go review in the books Dogfish Head have you been to the brewery have you had their beers have you had this beer have you had it fresh what were your impressions then have you had it fresh and a little bit older has it changed for you and how has it changed all that fun stuff down there what's your favorite Dogfish Head beer what's my favorite Dogfish Head beer I'd have to think about it. It might be aged 120. Actually, it might be. It's probably a, a fight between age 120 and worldwide, but I'll, I'll throw a curveball at you. Old school. Aged old school. Man, I, miss, I can't find any. I don't even know if they make it anymore, but man, I love that beer. Anyway, there you go. Review in the books. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of a uh, more right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers, y'all.